Hey mates, so today is Monday the 20th, hold on let's do that, Monday the 20th of September and I've got a very unexpected early finish, excuse me, as in started at 7 and finished at 2 and uh a very unexpected easy day so as you can see I managed to get into the barbers on the way home which is nice so I haven't got a muck about doing it at the weekend anyway today I'm gonna to crack on with the 1 16th Hobby Boss Tiger 1 <coughs> and I'm gonna start at the beginning, number one, which is the idler and drive sprocket. I've got the stuff down here next to me already. So let's have a little look. So what I've done is I've got these stuff out of the bags. There's the sprocket. That's for the sprocket. A few of these are for the sprocket but the rest of them are for the wheels. I've labelled them up so I don't forget what screws they are. Over here is the idler and these bits here are for the idler. So if we start on this, there's actually quite a bit to clean up on these which I'm surprised at really. Big lump to come off there. Not so much on that one, but a bit of bit to cut off there, and a bit of filing. So move those over there. Let's get that big lump off first. I'll try dry fitting them just now and uh, definitely needs a bit of cleaning up. Malarkey. Let's get one of my trusty files. With that bit of a filing down. So that the two bits go together nicely and get any high spots off bit of scraping with a hobby knife that feels a bit better the other bit it's a massive chunk on there look can you see that massive chunk so I'll have to cut that bit off careful not to chop my fingers off the rest should just do with a good filing Right. 
Let's try them together now. See what's happening. Right, it's much better. Much better. The seam was barely touching when I dry fitted it before. Give them a little bit. Another going over. And another bit of a scrape. Wipe it all off. Another bit of a going over. The sponge. Another bit of a scrape. I assume they're ejector pin marks. Let's try it now. There's actually a little thing that slots into that slot there. So you can't put it on wrong. Turn it, clicks in. Yep, I can live with that. Little bit of sand in there. Happy days, that's the first one ready to rock. What's this one like? Another bit. This almost looks like it's been cut off of a sprue. There's a big chunk left on. But they were loose in bags. So whether that's whether they're made on a sprue and then they get cut off, I don't know. Give it a good old sand and a scrape again. What's this one? Oh yeah, look. Another massive bit there. Definitely looks like a sprue. But hey ho. Sort of sent to try us. Let's try that. Slot in again. Might give it another little bit of a going over. Just don't want it, you know, I'm not that fussed if there's a microscopic gap, but I don't want a massive gap. Right. That's better, I can live with that. By the time we get the screws on, we'll be rocking. Actually, there's quite a bit on the end of that there. So if I take that off, give that a sand. What's that one like? Yep. Right, they're ready to rock. So there's the idler wheel. 
and you have to put this metal idler wheel shaft in there but not glue it and then not that one John boy that one goes over the top of the shaft clicks in and then you've got the shaft bearing there it is for the to attach it to the lower hull and that spins well nicely so I've got my three little screws and my watchmaker's screwdriver which isn't magnetic sadly don't know why so there might be a bit of cursing going on here drop one in there see what we can see and these are going to be at the back so they're not going to be seen which is good so that can go in there And then the third one in there. That's it. We've got one idler wheel done. That's not bad at all. Spins around on that shaft. Hee ho, hee ho, hee ho, hee ho. Still a bit of a gap there that I'm not very happy with, so I might have to fill that. All in all, that was easy peasy. I won't bore you with going through the second one because you've already seen that. It's just exactly the same process. So I see. So there you go. We've got the two idlers done. Both of them spin round nicely on that metal shaft. Jobs are good, now, I reckon. They look good. And that's in my hand and I've got pretty big hands. Look at the size. Right, let's move on to the sprockets. Right, so it's a similar sort of deal with the sprockets. That fits in there. Bob's your mum's brother. Can only go on one way. Look at the size of that thing. It's mahusive. But before we do that, these wheel shafts have got to go in. And again, there's massive chunks of plastic on there that make me think if that might have been on a sprue. Or whether it's just a leftover from the moulding. I don't know. It just looks like it's been cut off to me. It's not going to be seen, it's all hidden inside. That's one. That's two. Now what you got to do, where are they, dude, ah, put that on top of them, these two metal things go through this shaft in theory Might need some it to give that a tap in with. I think the idea of it is so that it goes in that hole and goes across those two 
there you go locks it in place that's exactly what it is exactly there's a few bits of sticky outy plastic on here don't look too attractive right so let's get that done that goes through there locks into place there you can see the metal lock through there that goes on there can only go on one way with that little slot and there she is with the drive shaft there and again two holes on the back for the screws here's one I prepared earlier four screws this might be a bit of a challenge for the old boy I'll put that on there like it's gonna stay on there oh it is no it ain't there may be some cursing so if I use my tweezers maybe I can yeah boy tighten him up a bit tighter than the <coughs> idler I think I can get away with using a bigger one for that and I can that's about as tight as he's gonna go so it's number one screw in its hole. Let's get the other one in. And of course, if you make any cock ups, because it's screwed, it's going to be a lot easier to uncock up if you get my drift. Now that's going to be tight, that. It's not wanting to go on that one. Go in that baby. <laughs> right, that's one sprocket with the drive shaft. won't bore you with the other one right so there we have it two drive sprockets found a better screwdriver and got them way way down spin 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 there's the other one and the two idlers with the metal shaft three screws in the back spin 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 Spin, spin, spin. Right. So that's it. That's all I'm doing for today. <sighs> I doubt very much whether I'll get another easy peasy day like I've had today. So I might have to wait till the weekend for the next one. So that's that then. Two sprockets done. Two idlers done with the metal shafts 
Uh, one thing I did forget to say was I made a bit of a cock up when I bought the figure for the tank because he's got his arm up like that resting on top of the uh, what do you call it oh my word the hatch lid resting on the hatch lid like that on the picture but of course schoolboy error this tank doesn't have a lifty up hatch it has a slidey outy hatch so my figure will be standing there with his arm in the air like that in uh, mid-air doing nothing so I'm gonna have to try and find another one <coughs> hey ho he should do I've, I've got the uh, Das Work Verk Verk uh, 1 16th Stug on order and he'll be perfect for that so I'll put him to one side for that anyway thanks for watching I'm gonna go downstairs finish my brew and then feed my wee doggies thanks for watching catch you later bye